off. So <laughs> is that what happens? I mm -hmm. wish someone had told me. This we? is literary roadhouse. One short story. <laughs> once a time. Once a time. Oh geez. See, <laughs> I've messed it up. I, I, I seeing Annalise's shocked face. Right, we've got to, I'm going to start. Because it was again. me this time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Was it? By accident, was... I was trying to say we are live, and you had started to get ahead of Andy. And then, anyway. Oh, okay. No, no it's fine. Uh, Go on. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've forgotten the script. <laughs> right. This is Literary Roadhouse. One short story, once a week. I'm Gerald. I'm Andy. And I'm Anise. And uh, this week we have been reading Gentle Seduction, The Gentle Seduction by Mark Stiegler. And beware, I have been talking to Mark Stiegler on Facebook. So just. Uh oh. <laughs> just... The Mark Stiegler or a different uh -oh. Mark Stiegler? The Mark Stiegler. Oh, uh -oh. well, I have nothing but great things to say. So yeah. <laughs> I'm very jealous. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. 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 So anyway, let's do a summary, shall we? I'll do a summary. Mm -hmm. Why not? We're going back in time to 1989 when the story was written, and then we're going way forward in time during the story by millions of years. At the start, presumably contemporary to 1989 or thereabouts, our unnamed female narrator was living with Jack in Washington State. She loved Mount Rainier and worked with trees and flowers. He liked computers and worked with technology. He filled her mind with preposterous ideas about the future, about living forever and traveling to far off worlds and of nanobots, for God's sake, that could fix your aging body and build new worlds. Probably not at the time, but who knows? Jack gets an offer to work in far off California and goes and they drift apart. Oh. So she marries a forest ranger. They have children and dogs, but then the ranger husband dies in an avalanche and the dogs die and she's left alone. And one day when she was so old, she couldn't clear the snow and the thought of using the snow-clearing robot filled her with horror. She took a tablet to fix her bones and muscles, which worked great. But then she couldn't climb her beloved Mount Rainier, so she took a different tablet to fix her heart and lungs. But then she was getting forgetful, so she took another capsule to fix her neural circuitry. Then she bought one to fix her appearance, so she no longer looked 95, but looked 32 instead. That is some tablet. One day, when climbing the mountain, she was nearly killed by a falling overhang of ice, but her life was saved by a guy wearing a sweatband called a Nexion, which could connect his mind to distant computers and see into the future, just like her boyfriend said. This Nexion, Nexion enabled him to see the huge lump of mountain that was about to fall on him, so he saved their lives. Hurrah! But people didn't like these Nexions and sort of banned them. Anyone caught wearing one could be arrested. So she bought one. What do you know? She became more intelligent. Then she bought a capsule full of nanobots that built a nection under her skin. So no one knew and she couldn't be arrested. Then she, there's a lot of stuff happened in this story. Then she discovered that she could travel to distant planets by leaving her body on a safe planet, like Mars, of course, with machines to keep the body functioning. But she could travel inhabiting a kind of robot body. So that was good. Then she was an ambassador who met up with some aliens. <laughs> Let's just throw everything into this story. And she broke it a piece between them, and each went their separate ways. Then she started thinking about Jack because she found a report with his name on it and searched for him. She couldn't find him, so she made a simulation of him because she could remember every conversation they'd had word for word because she'd had a memory tablet, see? But it wasn't Jack. It wasn't really Jack. But then she starts asking questions. What are we? What defines us? Which is a fascinating question. And it entertained my partner and I for almost an hour when we read it. So there we are. That's the summary. A long summary for me. I'm very confused by your tone. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Is this oh, a British? Oh, yeah. Like it sounds like you like your like your tone sounds like you don't like it, but I know you did because you said you've liked it. So I'm very confused. Oh, I, I I've been doing a lot of. Um, voiceover and and audio book narration and stuff so I, i've been trying to because because my natural tone being from birmingham in the midlands is very downbeat very monotonous literally so i've been trying to hey da, 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 brighten things up so I there see. 
But it almost anyway. seemed though, in this case like you were making fun of it. I was like, what? All of this is amazing. I was very confused. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it is. I mean, it, because when you do a summary of it, it does sound <clears throat> pretty weird. And, and then this happened, then that happened, and then all these fantastic things happened. But it was good. So there we are. Andy, what did you think of the story? Okay. Uh oh. I like the story very much. I want to say that first. But I notice that it's from 1989. <clears throat> and there's just a couple things that I think are interesting from 1989. And I, I think Jack is a complete asshole. And I was a little thrown off by the end that it ended up being sort of a redemptive love story about Jack. I thought when Jack was hanging out with our narrator at the beginning, I was like, oh, wow, you're kind of a dick. You're sort of like nagging her all the time. Like, yeah. And then she didn't marry him. I was like, oh, okay, good. It's, it's a story about how Jack was kind of a dick and she married some nice cool park ranger guy who had interests in common with her. And then all at the end, it hooked back around. I was like, oh, but like it was the secret love from behind. I was like, okay, okay, what? okay, whatever. It was 1989. It was a different time. Jack was kind of a dick. He was always wait, a wait, dick. wait, wait. Jack's a okay. Dick. We'll get back to this because yeah, All I right. don't. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We'll argue about Jack. It's not my I main don't... complaint. I just it needed to be said. Okay. Part two. Uh -huh. Wow. What's really, really interesting is the sorts of things that we could envision in yesteryear as as forward thinking future stuff, and also the sorts we did not right. So she's got this cybernetically implanted nanobot supercomputer that wirelessly connects to the sum of all human knowledge. And with that, she no longer I needs to manually balance her checkbook, which implies she's still paying for things with paper checks <laughs> in the year 2200. It's only because she's in her hundreds. I know, sure I know but like, children are not. <laughs> it's just really are... interesting. It's not a complaint. It's just, no. yeah, I can see that sort of thing. But like, how else could you possibly pay for things? Yeah. We in 1989 yes. can conceive of no other options. But they must her have grandchildren had... have space Venmo. They must have had cards, cards in in 1989. Well, I was thinking though, no, right? But like, uh, they had like credit cards, but like not like. I don't remember debit cards like bank cards, right? Right. You'd have a Maybe. credit card, but not an actual check right. card. Right. Yeah, that That's was kind of newer. Take from my bank right away sort of card. Yes. Right. Good point. So I don't know, but it was just interesting. That yeah. always happens with sci-fi, right? Where you see yeah. some things where you're always like, whoa, look at all this stuff that they knew like decades ago. And then you're like, you really missed this <laughs> because <Yes>. of <laughs> your time. I, I think that, that Arthur C. Clarke sometimes, I think, whoa, what a, what a, you know, what a great imagination. What a brilliant, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they did what? And it's, it's usually the simplest things like, like currency or just like how you yes. pay for things, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Though it is probably a lot less fun to think about that. <laughs> yes, I guess. Uh, yeah. So yeah, with 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 those things said, part one, I think Jack's a jerk. Part two, that's just real interesting. The differences in futurism. Uh, no, the story was great though. Um, oh man, we see. I read this first a little while ago, and I like brushed up on it, but I didn't get. Yeah, the repeated refrain line a year passed, and by then it just didn't seem to matter. Ooh. Oh, I liked it. Yeah. Right. I liked it the second time it got repeated. And then by the fifth time, I was like, oh, it's beautiful. Very clever. Yeah. 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 There's there's so many nice things like that. And and right at the end, the very last line. And by then it just didn't say and, and it just rounds it all off. Very, very yeah. nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. So Gerald, what was your you liked it a lot too, but just to get get your points, yeah. Yeah, I I I mean I used to read a lot of sort of traditional sci-fi like this and and um and, and I used to enjoy the crikey, that was forty something years ago. <laughs> wow. 
1989 almost. Um, and uh, actually, it wasn't far off, yeah. Anyway, um, so I used to read this stuff and and really enjoyed it. And, and, and since then, I've moved away and I've sort of gone to more sort of realistic genres of fiction. Um, but it was great to go back to this and, and, and to sort of, like Andy says, you sort of, it's great to see what they could, what this guy could foresee back then all those years ago um and and what they didn't and what what he missed and but i loved the fact because the story itself is a gentle seduction i like that about it because it's she it she is seduced into the technology um initially from a purely practical point of view and then she gets and she kind of likes it and then she wants to look a bit younger and and the nection thing so it's it's sort of I, I love those stories where something small sort of hooks into the character and, and they think well it's only a little bit so i'll just do that and then and they just sort of rolls up and rolls up and and um so i love that and i love the whole sort of analysis of our the whole idea of creating uh cr trying to recreate jack because that because the whole of her sort of enlightened life has been about using technology to to create stuff and to give you fantastic capabilities but she can't recreate jack she can create him and his the things he says but it's not him and that so he had that sort of whole analysis is what defines us as 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 a person and it's not just the body and the this talk and the brain and stuff, but there's there's something else as well that that she recognised and uh, um, and 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 accepted that that it wasn't uh, it wasn't real Jack, not that she'd want him of course because he's a dick. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really I there's so much about this I liked and and just even though it's a, one of our longer stories, it's uh, just tore through it. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I also like that refrain, obviously, the whole, you know, and then it, it just didn't seem to matter because that it, <clears> the, <throat> the time, every time kept getting longer and longer. And then it was like a beautiful refrain that brings you back to um, the gentle seduction, like thesis and title of the whole story. Um, but then the other things I liked was what Gerald was mentioning, the very human aspects of it. Um, like the things that seduce her, it's not petty things it's not like it's not really fear driven it's like kind of noble understandable good things right like she she wants to be able to, to plow her own um snow so she can arrange it a certain way instead of having it look ugly which of course like you want to be able to like shape the area around you she wants to be able to explore she wants to do what she has always loved right she wants to connect to her family so i like the fact that it's not like she's doing this out of a place of fear um, which is nice. That's mm. really nice. Or even like when she decides, okay, I'll look young. It's not like the ugly version of Vanity. It's just, I want to be seen. That's it. She just didn't like that she was invisible because she was old and it felt ridiculous. So like there was like a niceness to it that made the seduction something that um, you as the reader aren't like, because it could very easily be you're doing this because you're scared and that mm. would, would have been as seductive for us. So I like that. And then I also liked... Um, uh, the music, the passage about music, where um, the singing that she has going on all the time, and it's like space songs, space noise, and <laughs> things she wouldn't even be able to hear or understand if she didn't have an augmented brain, because it speaks back to something being innately human, like that connection that all humans have always had since who knows when, right? All, all civilizations across the globe, like music is a thing, and it resonates. Um, and it's still that still is happening for her even in the future as she seems physically or in her day-to-day -day less and less human that grounds her in being human which i liked a lot um and then uh just that second little thesis he had like the thing this is why i think the jack story well i want to talk to andy about why he thinks he's a dick <laughs> but there's that part where it's like um remember where they find like the ruins of old alien civilizations that right. had, yeah that had not made it and humanity had made it because only those who knew caution without fear, only those marked by her elemental form of prudence made it through. And that's what I think Jack had identified so long ago that made him sort of like love her and believe in her. And remember, all his predictions come true, including his prediction that her 
the fears that she has, she will not fear when the time comes to not fear them. Even that prediction comes true about her. Like he really saw her um, and had complete faith that no, she's like, she, not only will she be able to live this, but she's going to do it the right way, the way that it should be done. So I think it is extremely romantic. <laughs> he's not nagging her. He, he's seeing her. Yeah. 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 But like, I don't know. Yeah. He could have been less of a dick when she was 25 though. How was he a dick? What was so harsh about what he said? Oh, okay. No. It's, it's like he's teasing her. In a flirty, fun... He's not really arguing I with her. She's know, like, no, man. I'm afraid of it. He's like, okay. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And then she, and then he's like, you'll remember I said this, right? And then she's like, yeah. thousands of years later, she's like, oh my god. I don't know. He, okay. knew, he knew me so well. <laughs> Yeah, that's sort yeah, of that's, that's sort of the romantic fantasy of a certain type of man who wears a fedora. Is that <laughs> I'll tell this woman what she's going to see, and then in the future she will see that I saw her. I like, mean, if you only ever see things through who has power in a relationship in terms of their like gender, sure, and in the general sense, I can see that critique. But when you zoom in on this particular thing, I don't think we have enough about Jack to see him uncharitably like that because there's also room for people just to like sometimes the way we learn about each other's and the ways other people see us right if it was her best female friend would it have stung as much like no it would not have no yeah and and, and i think that's the thing i think andy like i coming from a a male perspective and we don't like to see males being like this to 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 women and i i think it's it's it just grates a little bit when, when, you know, a man acts in this way, all cocky yeah. and and arrogant and all of that. I think well, I like, think it's important uh, to have that point of view and to definitely know that that does exist because it does, and be able to see things through that critique. That's a good thing. I guess what I'm saying is, in this particular story, there isn't enough about anything else in Jack's life that you need to come down on. Aha! He is a fedora wearing neckbeard who hangs out on MRA subreddits. Like, you know, like there's just nothing else here for that. And then you have to sort of step back and be like, or is this just two people who know each other well, who have a certain intimacy, who are okay having these conversations? If they were both women, would it be okay? And like that kind of stuff. Like maybe, but we don't know enough about him. So I, it's she, more about she, her story and the romance. Yeah, she married a forest ranger though. She didn't marry Jack. She yeah, Jack went off to invent and, wonderful things before his heart gave out. Well, yeah, but then he just he just left her. He just said, oh, I've got this great job. Bye. And off he went. Yeah. Oh, oh Andy. Bye, dropped Andy. Off. <laughs> That's <sighs> the wrong button. Yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of... I, I, yeah, I, I don't feel as strongly about him as, as Andy does, but but I just thought, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's a little bit arrogant. He, he, you know, he tells her what's going to happen and, and he doesn't yeah. doesn't really try to understand her i don't think but that's my that's my opinion he is a bit arrogant but he has the arrogance of the genius inventor type so it's like eh. yeah 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 that's you kind of need that to dare to dream so big well there is there is that isn't there it, it's it's the, the the genius the the sort of level between um being a being clever and and being um sympathetic and mm -hmm. i think Sometimes genius gets a little bit, um, <laughs> takes a little bit of um, precedence, but you know, yeah. whatever. Andy, yeah, I was conceding that he is arrogant, though, but also that that's kind of what you need to be the genius inventor type. So, right, right, right. And look, this is I'm maybe making a larger deal of this because it's like a, 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 a single grain of sand in an otherwise perfect. Smooth thing. I don't know. Well, this maybe. this thing is sticking in my craw, but also I love the story. So, yeah, yeah, so good. And it, it's kind of strange she didn't try to recreate her her forest ranger husband guy. I had but that then, on the first read through, but on the second, it felt very natural. Right. Yeah, like, and know, they had a life that was their kind of life. Uh, but I think. Just thinking about it, yeah, the forest ranger guy actually died, whereas she lost touch with Jack. So she might have assumed that Jack would have been 
into all of his tech and and been somewhere around like her full of nanobots and leaving a body behind leaving a body in storage <laughs> it's quite it's quite funny yeah. that also the romantic aspect with jack by the time she does the simulation stuff she's also idolizing him because she's so grateful for the things that he helped contribute to the life she now leads right yeah yeah, you're, you're. Although you are making an assumption that he contributed, he, he might have gone to California and, and worked on, I don't know, maps or or social media sites, websites or something. And not that's all that's his name stuff. was on something, right? Yeah, she she dug into the history. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, like one of those first pills was his direct mm -hmm. invention. Yeah. Oh. Um. Also, can we just say Nexion's a real cool lingo term for a uplink <laughs> device? Yeah, yeah. Nexion. That's good. Nexion. That's a good one. Especially the one that, that you can implant inside on yeah. your skin. That's cool. The subcutaneous Nexion. Yes. I like when it put her like uh, the guy who's like, welcome to the gang. He's like, I haven't <laughs> had this as a teenager. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all creepy. <laughs> yeah. Ah. yeah, I was just flicking past, and, and uh, one of those times when it's uh, I've lost it, of course, now. Um, one of those times when it says about, uh, oh, yes, about the leaving her body in storage, which is sort of quite an interesting concept because she, it, it's, it's like explaining something that isn't she obviously isn't leaving her body in storage she's just with her mind going off to a, a, a different place and and connecting through the the nexion to different stuff so she can pretend to be in his old places but I, I quite like that concept and then they they said you know you have to keep returning and yeah and then she she sort of forgets and she was busy and there's a new robot and a year passed and by then it just didn't seem to matter so she sort of lived without her body in a sort of way. It's quite interesting, interesting concept. Yeah. The other, um, I forgot about this also, when they're making new planets, when the needles are going out and like making whole entire new planets. And it's um, that some of the new, she went to go explore the new planets constructed by artists. I love that idea of like, as soon as you have this new medium, artists are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, got a, I got a statement to make with my planet. <laughs> Yes, those artists, they're getting on everything, don't they? <laughs> and just this idea of like all the different personalities still matter, right? Like when they do meet the aliens and it's not going well, she has a unique characteristic that's going to make this go well, her elemental prudence, right? Like it's like, like that still matters. And that, and right, she's not the artist making planets, someone else is. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of funny. She's like kind of a passenger, but, but then sort of by becoming a this ambassador she 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 takes a, a forward role in 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 society and the development of society so that's kind of neat and then she joins the hive mind yeah <laughs> because remember that was her wow. biggest fear right she was saying oh i don't want to live forever i don't want to live on an asteroid blah, blah, blah. but then her biggest one was the idea of her memories or her like brain being scrambled like that's worse than death and that's the thing she's most afraid of and then she gets seduced by it for a billion years and it didn't matter anymore. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's um yeah, it it's it's a pretty interesting concept. Pretty interesting. I also liked um what people pass on to their kids. For her great grandchildren, it's the physical characteristics, it's the DNA stuff. And then for the um AI droid like robot great great grandchildren, it's the mental characteristics. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like the, the fact that, prudence. I like the fact she talks about sort of them them living on Mars and wanting her to to come and live with them. It just it's just like yeah, like like parents grandparents would and say, "Come and live with us. It's fine." This is it's like yeah, it's on a different state. Yeah, <sighs> it's very good. <sighs> Yeah, I liked it a lot. I know, Anise, you touched on it earlier, but I also really liked the the secondary thesis about not giving up 
the the parts of humanity that might be reluctant to brace such a transcendent transformation right like because the the alien races that do that that become a technocracy they just like die they're done they're <laughs> done they don't have it anymore yeah right that's the part that's the part of us i like it's it it's very hopeful right mm. it's so wholesome <laughs> It's wholesome and hopeful. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is strange. It's it's like technology that we can barely imagine even now. And yet there is that level of humanity that still runs through it. And and you, you get the fit, you know, she's still her, no matter what she's doing with her body and her mind and, and the you know, the hive mind and all that stuff. She's she's still her. Although the hive mind still uses paper checks. <laughs> so that's a little they send them out in space needles and then you receive yeah. your paper check in a space needle <laughs> how else would you pay for something i i agree there's no other way it cannot be it's done impossible you have a robot to write it though so that's right right yeah, yeah, they yeah. transcended their flesh so. right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh funny. yeah I was going to say something, and then we started making jokes about paper checks. What were you saying, Andy, about... Um, oh, uh, yeah, about wholesome? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that it's super wholesome, but the story doesn't have a traditional story conflict. It doesn't have your traditional, like, there's a thing you got to resolve, and then there's, like, a big climax, and then it gets resolved. It doesn't have that at all. Like, the closest you get to it is, like, is she going to hive mind? Like, that's the closest you get to, like, the moment. Uh, but we all know she's gonna hive mind. Like you've been, she's been right. Like, yeah, and yeah, yet it's, right. Once she took the back pills, mm -hmm. yeah, and yet it, it still holds together even without having like a, a driving conflict. Somehow, yeah. why do you think you do it? It's, it's. I suppose it's really an inner conflict, isn't it? it? It's that inner conflict of her not wanting to be to get sucked in by the technology that that uh, that Jack promised that. And, and at every stage, she just did it because it was important to do it. It was necessary to do it. Uh, and, and even that bit where um, she was, uh, yeah, she should have gone back to her body, but she was busy with a, some sort of robot thing. So she, she stayed out of her body for a bit longer. And after a year, it didn't matter. So it, it's, that all, it's all that sort of, it's perfectly understandable that once you've done this, then that stage is, is not such a big step. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's 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 a character arc story. It's about her growth, which is definitely a traditional kind of plot. But even then, like her struggle isn't that much of a struggle, right? She's not like fighting some inner demon. It's no. like she just right, is well, a <clears throat> right. Her struggle is only a struggle if you look at the beginning and the end of it, right? You know, like, oh, is she gonna make this giant jump? But each step on it is such a a gentle, gentle seduction, even. <laughs> mm -hmm. and right? That's, that's the thing. That's why. That's why it's. It's. That's why it's really good because it. it yeah, you know, she's just an ordinary person, and and she just likes nature and plants and hiking up mountains and stuff like that. And and that first step to the the the, the tablet that that performs a purely sort of functional necessity to 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 enable her to shovel some snow. Um, it she it's just that sort of small step into it. Um, so she, yeah, she definitely, you know, wasn't she doesn't mention any technology when she was with her husband and when she had kids and anything like that. Didn't do it. Didn't enter into the story until she was on her own and the dogs had died and she needed to shovel some snow. She was still aware, but she wasn't. Uh, she hadn't used it, and she'd been sort of staying away from it yeah and i think part of also why it works so well is because she's so likable because she is drawn to the parts of technology that are connecting her more with the universe she's an explorer by nature um she's driven by basically a kind of inner growth and enlightenment because Parallel to all of this, there's probably like garbage technology and garbage things that people use this for. People still have baser impulses. And he doesn't touch on any of that, right? He doesn't talk about like 
whatever the Twitter version is of this or whatever, right? Like he stays on the wholesome and pure and he's not like, oh, and then some people are walking around being like walking vices. I'm sure they exist. Like you're not going to avoid that. Or the people who lose themselves in the dreams. That's like, that's like the oh. hint that some people aren't quite ready for this. Um, but he sticks to somebody who kind of makes the best use of it. Vice like sin, not vice like a tool. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Like, I was like, well, I don't know with robot bodies. Maybe these people are walking vices. They just clamp. <laughs> they could be. Like, I, I caught up with you. Yeah. Andy was on a way different <laughs> story. She's holding two by fours. And I'm thinking of Futurama. The clamps! The guy with the, yeah. the clamps. All right. Um, anything uh, else you want to say? I, I think I've exhausted my notes. Yes, I made notes too. It's very rare for me to do that. But yeah, I think that's. I think I'm yeah. done. Oh, we should give it. We should assign numbers to the story. We should rate it. Yeah. That's really? Nice. <clears throat> Why do we do that? There's nothing more to say. Yeah. Letting Gerald read his notes. Because it's a uh, jeez, a form that sort of keeps us organized. I, I don't know if there's any inherent value in assigning ratings. This is, I I haven't got notes. I've got an essay. <laughs> three, three and a half pages of notes here. That's... Have we covered them all? Yeah, I, I guess. Let's go for a coffee break while Gerald reads through his essay. No, <laughs> no, no. It's, it's uh... yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. Let's you always like highlighting bits. Is there any bit you highlighted that you liked? Any no, it, it's just the um, the bit that didn't seem to matter. Um, there's a bigger bit uh that, 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 that what was all that about yeah elemental qualities were vital humanity yeah that that's so we've already covered those i yeah. like the bit where the the mountain mountain was dying and she could have saved the mountain but she's like nah i'll i'll take a 3d picture of it and recreate it but i'm not going to actually save this mountain that's that's life Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and and how like doing that somehow robs it of its like natural course. Right, the mountain deserves yeah. to do that. Yeah, deserves to explode, obviously. Right, but then she yeah, like, grabs a marmot. I that my second read throw. I'm like, this marmot must be shooting itself. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the marmot. <laughs> yeah, she she she's she's talking about um. Uh, other species had come to the singularity and had died there. Some had died in a frenzy as the builders of new technologies indulged in an orgy of inventions. So that that sort of that way that she was grounded in in herself and she used the technology to to enhance her life rather than just go for technology because it's it's it's, it's technology. Right, that's what that's I would do. It. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. You can't get too much technology. The writing that, was very simple and straightforward, but I was going to say one that stuck out for me is when she's debating between the snow machine or the pill, and it's um, how uh, the thought of the pill made her shudder, but the snow machine made her sick, which is interesting because she's <laughs> the pill is the one that she's more okay with. Yes. I like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Wait, wait, is this, is this towards the... Just bear with. I, it's, it's not my essay that I'm looking at, by the way. It's, it's towards the end, and when she was talking about Jack and and whatnot, and she said, from her, Jack had learned the importance of making technology step small, making its pieces bite size. He had learned this as he watched in her disbelieving eyes, her reaction to the world he'd planned. So it's that, it's that sort of thing. It, it's it's that he had, as Annie said, that that he went off to, to do this sort of technology stuff, but he'd taken something from her that, that if to make the technology work, then you had to make it accessible. It had to be, don't just sort of dump robots on everyone and, and, and taking over the world. They just add a little bit and then another little bit. I thought that was a, a nice sort of piece and fits into the gentle seduction uh, story. Yeah. yeah. Numbers. Numbers. Okay. Numbers. Who wants to go first? Andy? Oh, man. 
Now that I've proven to you that you can't be as mean about Jack as you are. No, you haven't proven that. I, I, I think I have. No. Nope. <laughs> you think you have. Yeah. Jack's, Jack's still kind of a... But I don't know. I, uh, I, mean, I, don't, some points. I don't think Jack would have been like that if it was a story about 1999 even. Rather than 1989. Right. We just didn't know that much. There's only been a couple thousand years of human male female relations. We didn't know that much yet. It's really only in the last. <laughs> um I think I'm gonna give it a four, a four out of six. That feels did you guys just gasp because that's low? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it gonna... felt low when I was saying it, but then a five felt high. How does a five feel high? Just because you don't like Jack? What number would you yeah. give it if there was no Jack and then go down one or a half? You don't do halves. <laughs> go down one. If there's no Jack, I think I'd give it a five. Really? Well, but then if there's no Jack, there wouldn't have been any uh, There's no story. Yeah. robot pills. It'd just be about this nice lady who lived on a mountain and then her husband died and then yeah. she had a heart attack shoveling snow. Yes. <laughs> no, okay. I think I'm going to give it a five. I Whoa. think I'm going to give it a story a five. Blood from a stone. <laughs> We were hit out of six, right? We we didn't change the scale. It's not out of like twenty. No. <laughs> Five's pretty good. Four is pretty good. I, yeah, yeah, I guess. If you don't really like a story, um, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a straight six for me. I I love the story. I loved the engagement I got out of it. I love the 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 sort of wrangling with with what is humanity discussions that we had um here um and i love the way the way that the title so fits in so well to the story the the gentle seduction of the technology and really beautifully put together so yeah straight six no worries yeah i'm torn oh, between a five and a half and a six just because there's other sixes I've given that felt to me, resonated with me, where I was just like screaming more. But also yes. it's so perfect that it feels like I wouldn't change anything about it, though, even though it doesn't make me, you know, do my typical like cackle. Um, well, right, I'm going to give it a six. It, it's a different kind of six. I'm growing as a, as a Okay. <laughs> Expanding to include more What's kinds of It's a gentle six. So, yeah, he gently seduced me to a six. Right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, Andy, what are we reading next week? Oh, yeah. We're reading a story next week. And oh. That story has a title. Nice. And that title is Hope The Dragon Project by oh. Naomi Kritzker. No, it's not science fiction. It's got dragons in it. Oh, okay, that's all right. Space dragons. I don't know. I think, I I think they true. are space dragons. Yeah. They might be space dragons. Yeah. Cool. It's in Clark's world, so there's a high chance of space <laughs> dragons. Yes. <laughs> okay. But before you go, join our hive mind in our Facebook discussion group, the Literary Roadhouse Readers. Also, I've noticed people have been joining. Don't wait for us to start discussions. Just go ahead and start a thread. Um, and we cannot yet physically explore new planets and altered bodies, but books are the closest we have to transporting ourselves into other states of being. Help others discover the liberating power of story by leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you get your pod. And in the future, podcasting will be free. But for now, it's not. Contribute to our podcast expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, always share this podca podcast with your great great android grandchildren until next time read a good story hey. can they send a paper check they can send a paper check yes <laughs> yeah please send that... a paper check to patreon somehow figure it out <laughs> is that what you kids call podcast now pod where pod, you get yeah i pod? noticed that is it you a... call it a pod now <laughs> oh, yeah if you're base you why call does, it a pod <laughs> why does stuff keep changing why can't we just keep <laughs> Let me get my checkbook out here. <laughs> not being gently seduced to calling it a pod? <laughs> no, I was hammered over the head with it. Wherever you get your pod, you said, and bang, that was it. Very cool. I'm yeah. 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 yeah right. you, could have, you could have introduced me a bit more gentle to you. Right, start with like a podka and then. <laughs> podka. Podka. <laughs> well, you could have said, "Hey, you, Gerald, you know what we're calling podcasts now?" I mean, that could have been <laughs> for 
pared the way a little bit. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Gonna end the broadcast. Enough of this nonsense.